The scene unfolded in a small town of Brantley, known for its tight-knit community and deep-rooted traditions, in the local hospital, amidst its modest yet comforting surroundings, Mary, a 28-year-old woman brimming with anticipation, awaited the arrival of her newborn son, her husband, Ethan, stood steadfast by her side, his reassuring presence a silent vow of unwavering support. When Mary's contractions intensified, a palpable sense of anticipation filled the room, mingling with the gentle hum of medical equipment and the soft murmurs of nurses, each contraction brought her closer to the moment she had eagerly awaited, the joyous reunion with her baby boy, despite the pain, Mary found solace in Ethan's comforting words and tender gestures, his love serving as a beacon of strength amidst the storm of labor pains. Meanwhile, Diar, Simmons, the obstetrician overseeing the delivery, exuded a reassuring aura, instilling a sense of calm amidst the intensity of the moment hours seemed to blur together as Mary navigated the ebb and flow of labor, her determination unwavering in the face of adversity, with each passing moment, the anticipation grew, the room pulsating with the promise of new life, finally, as the clock ticked on, Mary's efforts culminated in the long-awaited moment, the birth of her son, Jake, a wave of relief washed over the room as Dr. Simmons placed the newborn in Mary's arms, her smile reflecting the shared joy of the moment, however, amidst the jubilation. Tragedy struck when the doctors declared the newborn's untimely passing, heartbroken and inconsolable, Mary grappled with the devastating loss, her world shattered in an instant, yet, while Mary mourned the loss of her precious son, a miracle unfolded at the funeral, in a moment of disbelief and sheer astonishment, Mary heard the unmistakable sound of her baby crying, shattering the veil between life and death. Overwhelmed with disbelief and hope, Mary's heart swelled with a newfound sense of possibility, in the midst of tragedy, a glimmer of hope emerged, illuminating the path forward with the promise of miracles and the enduring power of love amidst the flurry of anticipation and the collective breath held in the room, Dr. Simmons's voice cut through the air like a knife, breaking the heavy silence that hung over them, with a mixture of trepidation and sorrow, she announced the arrival of little Jake, her words laced with both celebration and urgency when the doctor guided them. Newborn into the world, the room buzzed with a mixture of anticipation and anxiety, each moment pregnant with the promise of new life, yet, as Jake was placed in the crib, a foreboding silence descended, shattering the jubilant atmosphere, the room fell into an eerie stillness as the absence of the newborn's cries echoed ominously, Dr. Simmons, once a beacon of confidence, now grappled with a torrent of emotions when she attempted to coax forth the sound they all longed to hear with bated breath. Mary and Ethan watched, their hearts heavy with fear and uncertainty, the doctor's efforts to elicit a response from Jake's tiny form yielded only silence, her expression shifting from anticipation to disbelief, then to the crushing weight of despair in a desperate attempt to break the silence, Dr. Simmons applied gentle pressure to Jake's chest, her fingers trembling with the weight of the moment, but despite her efforts, the room remained hauntingly silent, each passing second stretching into an eternity of agony, Mary, her voice quivering with unspoken dread, dared to voice the question that loomed heavy in the air, Dr. Simmons, her own heart heavy with sorrow, struggled to find the words to deliver the devastating news with a heavy heart and tear-filled eyes, Dr. Simmons finally uttered the words that shattered their world, Mary and Ethan's hopeful gazes turned to her, their expressions a reflection of the anguish that gripped their souls, the unbearable weight of grief settled over. The room, enveloping them in a suffocating embrace, when the reality of their loss sank in, Mary and Ethan were left reeling, their minds struggling to comprehend the magnitude of their devastation, in the face of such overwhelming sorrow, there were no words of comfort, no solace to be found, only the crushing weight of a grief too profound to bear, as they grappled with the unimaginable loss of their beloved son. In the serene town of Brantley, nestled amidst verdant landscapes and gentle hills, a heartbreaking tale unfolded, within the walls of the local hospital, a scene of hopeful anticipation unfolded, contrasting sharply with the somber reality that was about to transpire, Mary, a young woman overflowing with maternal love, awaited the arrival of her newborn son with eager anticipation, her husband, Ethan, stood by her side, his unwavering support a beacon of strength in the face of uncertainty, together, they braced themselves for the momentous occasion that was about to unfold, when the hours passed, the air in the room crackled with nervous energy, mingling with the soft hum of medical equipment, 
Mary's labor intensified with each passing moment, her resolve bolstered by Ethan's reassuring presence by her side, finally, the moment arrived, and amidst a flurry of activity, the doctor announced the arrival of their son, Jake, yet, instead of the joyous cries of a newborn filling the room, a heavy silence descended, casting a pall over the scene, Dr. Simmons, the attending physician, navigated the delicate task of delivering the devastating news to the new parents with a heavy heart, despite her best efforts, the reality of Jake's condition weighed heavily on her, her voice trembling as she delivered the crushing blow for Mary and Ethan, the news was incomprehensible, shattering their hopes and dreams in an instant. Their world crumbled around them as they grappled with the unimaginable loss of their beloved son when they held Jake's lifeless form in. Their arms, grief enveloped them, threatening to consume them whole, in that moment of profound sorrow, they clung to each other, finding solace in their shared anguish. In the days that followed, Mary and Ethan would navigate the turbulent waters of grief, their hearts heavy with sorrow and longing, yet, amidst the darkness, they found glimmers of light, memories of Jake's fleeting presence that would forever be etched in their hearts. The aftermath of Jake's passing plunged Mary and Ethan into an abyss of grief so profound that it seemed to swallow them whole, every breath was a struggle, each heartbeat a painful reminder of the absence that now loomed over them, the world they had known, vibrant with hope and joy just moments ago, now lay in ruins, shattered by the cruel reality of their loss, Mary found herself clinging to the pain, as if it were the only tether connecting her to her precious son, in the midst of their anguish, the couple was engulfed by a torrent of tears and whispered condolences, nurses drifted in and out, offering solace in the form of gentle words and sympathetic glances, but nothing could penetrate the overwhelming emptiness that enveloped them as news of Jake's passing spread through the tight-knit community of Brantley, the town itself seemed to mourn, the arrival of the small white coffin symbolized the abrupt and unjust end to a life barely begun. Each resident felt the weight of the tragedy, their hearts heavy with sorrow for Mary, once. The epitome of joy and anticipation, the world had turned gray, her eyes, once filled with dreams and hope, now reflected only the desolation of loss, Ethan, equally devastated, struggled to find his footing in the wake of the storm that had engulfed their lives, yet, amidst the darkness, the couple found solace in the outpouring of support from their neighbors and friends, each visit, each plate of food brought with it a glimmer of light in their darkest hour, a reminder that they were not alone in their grief, in the midst of their sorrow. They found strength in the bonds of solidarity that defined their small town community. Mrs. Perkins, an elderly neighbor from across the street, offered her condolences to Mary and Ethan, expressing how deeply loved Jake was, the words, spoken in the past tense, felt surreal to the grieving parents, a stark reminder of the reality they were still grappling to accept. Preparing for Jake's funeral was a heart-wrenching ordeal for Mary and Ethan, each detail, from the small white coffin to the arrangement of flowers, felt like a painful stab to their hearts, yet, united in their grief, they were determined to bid farewell to their son with the utmost respect and dignity as the day of the funeral dawned, a gray and somber sky seemed to mirror the heaviness of Mary and Ethan's hearts, people gathered in their home, their voices hushed and their eyes brimming with tears, Mary held Jake's tiny coffin, her heart heavy with the weight of her loss, Pastor Thompson offered words of comfort, assuring Mary that Jake was loved and would always be watching over her from heaven, though these words provided some solace, they couldn't fill the void left by their beloved son, the funeral ceremony passed in a blur for Mary, the words of the pastor echoing faintly in her ears, she felt detached, numb to everything except the searing pain in her heart at the cemetery. They laid Jake to rest beside a tiny headstone engraved with his name, a young tree stood nearby, a symbol of life amidst death, but even this promise couldn't ease the anguish of Mary and Ethan. Mary knelt beside the small grave, tears streaming down her face when she poured out her grief onto the fresh soil. Ethan, equally devastated, stood by her side, offering silent support in the face of their profound loss as the small coffin began to descend into the grave. Mary whispered amidst her tears, questioning the tragic reality unfolding before her. With each creak of the lowering mechanism, the weight of her loss pressed down on her, the sorrow palpable in the silent cemetery, in her anguish, Mary cried out to God, pleading for the return of her beloved son, suddenly, a thunderous clap shattered the serene atmosphere, 
startling everyone present, despite the clear sky, the sound reverberated through the air, leaving the mourners bewildered, then, as if in response to Mary's desperate plea, a faint but unmistakable cry filled the cemetery, a sound of life amidst the sorrow the mourners stood frozen, there. Hearts pounding with disbelief, Mary, filled with a surge of hope, scanned the surroundings, her eyes widening when she realized the source of the cry, it was emanating from the small coffin, suspended halfway into the grave. In a moment of frenzied excitement, Mary and her husband rushed to the coffin, their hands trembling as they lifted it back up, with bated breath, they opened the lid to reveal their son, wrapped in a blanket, crying and alive, the shock and relief washed over the onlookers. Transforming the somber atmosphere into one of astonishment and joy, the one silent cemetery echoed with shouts of disbelief and tears of happiness while the miraculous turn of events unfolded before their eyes. The baby was swiftly removed from the coffin and enveloped in a warm blanket, offering comfort amidst the chaos. Ethan dashed to the car to seek help, leaving Mary cradling their newborn in her arms. Tears of relief streamed down her face as she held on to her precious miracle, her Emotions oscillating between overwhelming joy and profound disbelief upon arrival at the hospital, the medical team sprang into action, prepared to examine Jake, Dior, Simmons, her eyes now reflecting pure astonishment, wasted no time in assessing the baby's condition, each beat of Jake's tiny heart, every breath he took, seemed to defy the odds, serving as a testament to the inexplicable turn of events. When the tests commenced, the hospital waiting room buzzed with nervous energy and anxious. Anticipation, the one saddened community now rallied around Mary, sharing in her newfound hope, tensions mounted as they awaited the results, collectively holding their breath for a glimpse into the extraordinary phenomenon that had unfolded before them, when Dr. Simmons emerged from the examination room, her expression betraying a mix of bewilderment and awe, she beckoned the parents aside to deliver her findings. With a voice tinged with incredulity, she revealed the astonishing news, Jake's. Tests revealed no abnormalities, his heart beat steadily, his lungs functioned without issue, it was nothing short of miraculous, but Dr. Simmons didn't stop there, after much deliberation, the medical team proposed a hypothesis, Jake may have experienced Lazarus syndrome, a rare phenomenon where a person spontaneously returns to life after being declared dead, the revelation left everyone speechless. Grappling with the inexplicable twist of fate that had spared Jake's life with an abrupt halt in. Her speech, the doctor's gaze fixed on the couple seated before her, their stunned expressions mirrored her own astonishment. In most cases, she resumed, her tone laced with disbelief, the resumption of blood circulation post-cardiac arrest occurs within minutes, perhaps hours, after the issuance of a death certificate, but Jake's situation, she trailed off, shaking her head in bewilderment, the couple, Mary and Ethan, clung to her every word, their eyes shimmering with a blend of hope and Incredulity, to them, the doctor's explanation held the promise of a miracle, their little boy, Jake, defied the conventional limits of medical science, his revival stirred a wave of astonishment that rippled through the town of Brantley, whispers of his miraculous recovery echoed through every street, weaving their way into the fabric of community conversation, news outlets, both local and national, clamored to broadcast Jake's extraordinary tale, thrusting Mary and Ethan into an unexpected, Spotlight, overnight, their lives transformed into a spectacle of wonder and inspiration within the close-knit community of Brantley, Jake's story transcended mere news, it became a beacon of hope, a symbol of the inexplicable forces that shape our world. The local church, buoyed by a renewed sense of faith, hosted a solemn thanksgiving service in honor of Jake's remarkable journey. Meanwhile, the medical community grappled with Jake's case, scrambling to decipher its enigmatic complexities. Experts from far and wide converged to dissect the phenomenon, labeling it as a potential instance of Lazarus Syndrome, yet, even this explanation seemed to falter in the face of Jake's miraculous resurrection. Amidst the whirlwind of speculation and scrutiny, Mary and Ethan remained steadfast in their gratitude, for them, Jake's survival was nothing short of a miracle, a testament to the boundless power of love and faith. When Jake continued to flourish, his laughter became a melody of hope, his Every milestone a triumph over the inexplicable, Mary and Ethan treasured each moment with their son, knowing that their lives had been forever touched by the hand of Providence. In the end, it mattered little to Mary whether science could unravel the mystery of Jake's revival, 
What mattered was the simple truth, her precious baby was alive, a living testament to the enduring power of miracles in the wake of her son's revival. Every caress from her little boy breathed life into the once desolate halls of their home, infusing them with an effervescent aura of joy and love, yet amidst this newfound vibrancy, a lingering enigma persisted, the thunderous roar that ruptured the tranquil sky at the precise moment Mary's anguished cry pierced the air, this extraordinary event seared itself into the collective consciousness of all who bore witness. A thunderclap seemingly summoned from the very depths of the heavens in response to a mother's desperate plea the day had dawned clear and serene. Devoid of any inkling of an impending storm, confounding local meteorologists who scoured their records in search of an explanation for the sudden tumult in the skies. However, their efforts yielded not, leaving the mysterious thunderclap shrouded in an impenetrable veil of intrigue, this inexplicable occurrence swiftly became intertwined with Jake's remarkable narrative, adding a layer of mystique to his miraculous return that captivated the imaginations of all who heard it. For the rational minds of the scientific community, the thunder remained an unsolvable enigma. A baffling anomaly that defied all attempts at logical explication, yet for the faithful. Denizens of Brantley's religious community, it served as a tangible testament to the divine providence that had orchestrated Jake's wondrous resurrection, a celestial symphony echoing the boundless depths of a mother's love and faith. While the sands of time flowed inexorably onward, Mary beheld the steady march of her son's growth, his laughter ringing out like a jubilant melody that reverberated through the once mournful halls of their home, with each passing day, Jake blossomed into a beacon of hope and vitality, his vibrant spirit serving as a poignant reminder of the miraculous threads that wove through the tapestry of their lives, life in Brantley unfolded in the ebb and flow of days, the fervor surrounding Jake's extraordinary return gradually fading into the gentle rhythms of everyday existence, yet his story endured as a cherished parable of resilience and redemption, a testament to the transformative power of hope, faith, and love, for Mary and Ethan, their son's miraculous. Journey remained an indelible legacy, a luminous thread woven into the fabric of their lives, binding them together in an unbreakable bond of gratitude and wonder. And so, when the tale of Jake's miraculous return nestled into the annals of Brantley's history, it left behind a legacy of awe and inspiration, a story that would be recounted in hushed tones for generations to come, a testament to the enduring triumph of the human spirit in the face of adversity and doubt if this tale has stirred your heart. We invite you to explore more narratives of hope and resilience, don't forget to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for our latest updates, until we meet again, may the echoes of Jake's miraculous journey continue to illuminate your path with hope and wonder. After watching this story, what do you think of, then there is another story about a father loses daughter, let's continue. Robert Miller trudged through the bustling streets, the weight of Another grueling day at the assembly factory bearing down on his weary shoulders, with each step, fatigue gnawed at his bones, a relentless reminder of the physical toll exacted by his laborious work, yet amid the exhaustion, one thought buoyed his spirits, the anticipation of reuniting with his precious daughter, Anna, waiting eagerly at her school when he navigated the urban cacophony. Robert's mind oscillated between the remnants of his workday and the tender image of Anna's smile awaiting. Him, the routine of picking her up from school had become a cherished ritual, a brief respite from the rigors of his daily grind. Today, however, a last-minute task assigned by his boss had delayed Robert, setting him adrift in a sea of tardiness. Despite his best efforts, the minutes slipped away, each one amplifying his anxiety and guilt. Finally reaching Anna's school, relief flooded over him while he spotted her frolicking in the playground, her laughter a beacon of joy amidst the chaos of them. City, with a heavy heart, Robert apologized for his lateness, enveloping her in a warm embrace that momentarily eased the burdens he carried. Together, father and daughter embarked on the journey homeward, their conversation a balm to Robert's weary soul. Anna's innocent chatter and tales from her day at school filled him with pride and warmth, momentarily eclipsing the fatigue that weighed upon him. Navigating the throngs of commuters at the train station, Robert clutched Anna's hand tightly. His fatigue compounded by the frenetic energy of rush hour, the incessant bustle of the crowd seemed to engulf them, threatening to swallow them whole in its relentless tide. Desperate to escape the chaos, Robert longed for nothing more than the solace of home and the embrace of rest, 
yet fate had other plans, its cruel hand poised to deliver a blow that would reverberate through the corridors of time, little did Robert know, as he stood on that crowded platform, that the events unfolding before him would irrevocably alter the course of his life, setting in motion a chain of events that would remain shrouded in mystery for two decades to come when Robert settled into the train with Anna by his side, her youthful chatter filled the air with an infectious energy that momentarily lifted his spirits, despite his overwhelming fatigue, he mustered a faint smile at her excitement, listening as she eagerly outlined plans for the weekend ahead, we can make pancakes for breakfast, dad, what do? You think, Anna's voice bubbled with anticipation, her eyes alight with enthusiasm, sounds wonderful, my love, Robert replied, his words tinged with weariness, your favorite pancakes with honey on top, the rhythmic sway of the train and the snug warmth of the carriage enveloped Robert like a comforting embrace, coaxing his heavy eyelids to surrender to sleep, yet, a nagging sense of responsibility kept him vigilant, his gaze drifting intermittently to Anna beside him while she nestled against his chest, her soft breaths mingling with the steady hum of the train, Robert's gentle strokes through her hair became a soothing lullaby, but amidst the tranquil murmur of voices and the rhythmic clatter of wheels against tracks, exhaustion crept upon him like a stealthy shadow, in a fleeting moment of surrender, Robert's eyelids fluttered shut, succumbing to the relentless pull of fatigue, yet, his respite was short-lived as a sudden jolt and the sensation of someone brushing against him, snapped him back to consciousness, I'm sorry, Sir, a voice apologized, jarring Robert from his daze, blinking away the remnants of sleep, he scanned the carriage frantically, his heart hammering with apprehension, but Anna was nowhere to be seen, panic seized him, his voice trembling when he called out her name, each syllable laced with desperation, Anna, she, she was here, my daughter, she was here with me, as the train came to a halt at the station and passengers filed in and out, Robert's anguish. Intensified, his cries echoing through the emptying carriage, ignored by the indifferent throng, he continued to call out, his voice a desperate plea amidst the indifferent clamor, Anna, where are you, he implored, his words lost in the vast expanse of the station, but there was no answer, no sign of his precious daughter amidst the sea of faces that ebbed and flowed around him, frantically, Robert turned to the passengers surrounding him, his eyes wide with confusion and fear, nobody saw her, he, exclaimed, his voice trembling with anguish, oh my god, Anna, with a surge of desperation, he bolted down the aisle of the train, pushing through the throng of people in search of his missing daughter, Anna, please, has anyone seen my daughter, he cried out, his voice cracking with emotion, she has brown hair, she's wearing a blue dress, some passengers rose to their feet, joining in the frantic search, peering under seats and calling out for the little girl, but despite their efforts, there was no Sign of Anna, Robert's heart pounded in his chest, fear gripping him like a vice when the train pulled into the next station, standing at the door, he gazed out desperately, praying for a miracle with each passing moment, with each new stop, his voice grew more desperate, his cries for Anna echoing through the emptying carriages, but as the train reached its final destination, Robert stepped off onto the platform, his heart heavy with a sense of emptiness, alone and consumed by panic, tears streamed down his cheeks, each one a silent testament to the love and fear he felt for his daughter. Anna, where are you? he murmured, his voice barely audible amidst the bustling crowd, for Robert, the world seemed to have ground to a halt, his surroundings a blur of rushing people and swirling chaos approaching a station security guard, his voice quivered with emotion, please, he implored, his words choked with tears my daughter disappeared on the train, the man's tear-stricken plea echoed through the station. His voice trembling with desperation as he described his daughter to the security. Guard, she's eight years old, with brown hair, and wearing a blue dress, please, you have to help me, feeling utterly helpless and consumed by a whirlwind of guilt and fear, Robert stood before the security guard, his heart heavy with the weight of uncertainty, he pleaded for assistance, his words barely audible amidst his tears and anguish, while the security guard nodded solemnly, Robert's mind raced with a torrent of emotions. He couldn't fathom how his simple act of tardiness had led to such a dire situation, all he knew was that he had to find his precious Anna, no matter the cost, despite the efforts of the station staff and the thorough checks of nearby platforms, Anna remained elusive, the absence of surveillance cameras in certain areas only added to Robert's sense of despair with a heavy heart, Robert made his way to the police station, his steps heavy with the burden of loss.
Each passing moment felt like an eternity, his mind tormented by thoughts of his missing daughter. Returning home, Robert was greeted not by the warmth of family, but by the haunting emptiness of their once vibrant home, the walls seemed to close in on him, suffused with the weight of his failure, Sarah's anxious gaze met his when he entered, her anticipation quickly turning to dread as she realized Anna was not with him, in that moment, Robert's heart shattered into a million pieces. His wife's anguished cries piercing the silence of their home, I, I lost her, Sarah, Robert confessed, his voice barely above a whisper, his guilt overwhelming, as Sarah collapsed in anguish, Robert's own tears flowed freely, his soul crushed by the weight of his mistake, desperate to ease her suffering, Robert tried to explain, but his words fell short in the face of Sarah's devastation, he could only watch helplessly while she grappled with the harsh reality of their loss, each moment marked by the agony of their shattered dreams. The momentary lapse in attention had shattered their world beyond repair, leaving the hearts of those distraught parents irreparably broken, no words could soothe the anguish that followed, marking that night as the darkest in their memory, each passing moment heavy with regret and sorrow. In the ensuing months, the Miller family's existence became consumed by the relentless search for their missing daughter. Across the city, posters bearing Anna's image adorned every street corner, while both law enforcement and private investigators tirelessly pursued leads. The newspapers overflowed with pleas for any information, every day without news plunging the family deeper into despair, each night an agonizing descent into a world of haunting nightmares, once a family brimming with warmth and laughter, the Millers now found themselves immersed in a sea of unending anguish, Sarah, grappling with the unbearable weight of her daughter's absence, withdrew into a cocoon of sorrow and frustration, she was everything to me, Robert, our precious Anna, she whispered. Her voice choked with grief, meanwhile, Robert tormented himself with ceaseless self-blame, replaying the events of that fateful day in his mind, desperately searching for any semblance of solace amidst his overwhelming guilt, should have been more attentive, I should have held her hand tighter, he lamented, the weight of his remorse echoing through the hollow halls of their once vibrant home, gone was the laughter that once filled their household, replaced now by a suffocating silence that served as a constant reminder of Anna's absence, her room remained untouched, a shrine to her memory that only deepened the family's collective sorrow, I failed her, Sarah, I failed her as a father, Robert confessed, his words heavy with the weight of his despair, yet, Sarah, consumed by her own anguish, could offer no solace, her pain too raw to be assuaged as the years wore on. The Miller family remained ensnared in the relentless grip of grief, the unending pain and ceaseless mourning took a toll, particularly on Sarah, whose health steadily declined under the weight of her sorrow despite welcoming a baby boy named Michael into the world, the joy of his arrival could not fill the void left by Anna's absence, Sarah's health continued to deteriorate, her body weakened by illness amidst the unyielding agony and stress of their loss, Robert, torn between caring for his sick wife and their baby, felt increasingly helpless. Despite seeking medical support, he couldn't shake the feeling that things were only getting worse, tragically, Sarah passed away, leaving Robert to raise their son Michael alone, he carried the weight of responsibility for both his wife's loss and his daughter's disappearance, knowing deep down it was his fault, yet, amidst the sorrow, he vowed to be strong for his son, I promise to take care of you, Mike, Robert whispered to his little boy, cradling him in his arms. His heart still ached from the loss of Anna and Sarah, wounds that would remain open. Forever, in the years that followed, Robert dedicated himself to Michael, offering love and support despite the ever-present shadow of their absence, Anna's room remained untouched, a solemn reminder of the daughter he never stopped searching for and the wife he had lost, every night before bed, Robert whispered a silent prayer for Anna's safety, a ritual that became his solace amidst the grief as the years passed. Robert struggled under the weight of grief and the challenges of single parenthood, he withdrew from social life, finding solace only in his son and his work, yet, amidst the darkness, Michael brought moments of joy and light, his innocent smile a beacon of hope in their shared sorrow, twenty years had passed since Anna's disappearance, and Michael was now a young man of sixteen, despite Robert's efforts to move forward, the pain of the past lingered, however, on a cold evening, an unexpected turn of events unfolded, catching Robert and his son off guard, when they went about their routine, preparing lunch, a series of knocks echoed through the house, stirring Robert from his tasks, 
With a resigned sigh, he made his way to the door, expecting perhaps a neighbor or a passing salesman, however, what awaited him on the other side was beyond anything he could have imagined, standing before him was a striking young woman, her brown hair framing a face that bore a mixture of nervousness and hope, and then, with a single utterance, the world seemed to stand still. Hi dad, it's me, Anna, Robert's heart skipped a beat, his breath catching in his throat as he struggled to comprehend the impossible, the woman before him was the spitting image of the little girl he had lost so many years ago, tears welled in his eyes as the weight of the moment settled over him, Anna, is it really you, his voice was barely a whisper, choked with disbelief and overwhelming emotion, in response, the young woman nodded, a shy smile tugging at the corners of her lips, beside her, stood a man, his expression mirroring Robert's own incredulous joy with trembling hands, Robert pulled his daughter into a tight embrace, a flood of relief, joy, and love washing over him, yet, amidst the euphoria, a deep sorrow gnawed at his heart for the lost time they could never reclaim, while they sat together, the questions flooded Robert's mind, what had happened during all those years, where had Anna been on that fateful day, with bated breath, he listened as Anna recounted her harrowing, tale of abduction, the little girl, lured from the train carriage by a woman bearing a colorful balloon, had innocently followed, hoping to retrieve the enticing prize, but the woman, masking her sinister intentions behind a facade of kindness, had led Anna away, plunging her into a nightmare of captivity, taken to a foreign land, Anna spent months in the clutches of her captors, their nefarious plans to sell her thwarted only by a stroke of fate, seizing a fleeting moment of carelessness, Anna made a daring escape, fleeing from her captors and embarking on a journey back to the father she had. Thought lost forever, on the bandit's end, after Anna managed to escape their clutches, she found herself wandering the unfamiliar streets of an unknown city, her heart heavy with fear and uncertainty, unable to speak the local language, she felt utterly lost and alone, a mere child adrift in a sea of strangers, was a stroke of fate that led a compassionate family to take her in, offering her refuge and safety in their home. Despite their best efforts to locate Anna's family, their search yielded no results, as time passed without any leads to her origins, the family made the heart-wrenching decision to formally adopt her, showering her with love, education, and a sense of belonging. Growing up, Anna grappled with a sense of emptiness, a lingering void that no amount of love or care could fill, though she harbored vague memories of her real parents, she resigned herself to the reality of her new life embracing a new culture and language while always yearning for the unknown peace. Of her identity, as fate would have it, Anna crossed paths with David, a private investigator whose unwavering love and support would change the course of her life, bound by a shared desire to uncover her past, they embarked on a painstaking two-year journey of investigation, determined to unravel the mysteries of Anna's origins. Their relentless pursuit finally bore fruit when David unearthed crucial clues that led them back to Anna's hometown and, ultimately, to her father, Robert Miller, the revelation of her father's existence filled Anna with a tumult of emotions, mingling overwhelming joy at the prospect of reunion with profound sadness upon learning of her mother's passing, supported by David, Anna embarked on a journey to her homeland her heart brimming with hope and trepidation, the anticipation of reunion stirred within her a mix of excitement and pain, when she prepared to confront the memories of her interrupted childhood, arriving at the familiar doorstep of her childhood. Home, Anna's heart raced with anticipation, ready to embrace the long-awaited reunion with her father, at 28 years old, Anna's heart raced with anticipation as she stood before her father's door, her husband by her side, with a trembling hand, she knocked, feeling the weight of years of separation and longing hanging in the air, when Robert opened the door and laid eyes on his long-lost daughter, the moment was surreal, a whirlwind of disbelief and overwhelming joy in that fleeting instant, too. Lives that had been torn apart by tragedy and circumstance were finally reunited, Anna's journey from a lost child to a found woman had reached its poignant conclusion, and the reunion with her father was nothing short of pure emotion, tears and smiles mingled when father and daughter embraced, each trying to make up for the lost years that had kept them apart, to Robert, Anna still bore traces of the little girl he remembered, while Anna saw in her father the scars of pain and loss etched into his soul, in the days and weeks that followed, Anna shared her story with Robert, her voice trembling with emotion as she recounted her trials and tribulations, despite the joy of their reunion, 
there was an undercurrent of sadness as they grappled with the years of separation. I'm sorry for everything you've been through, Anna whispered, her voice thick with emotion, it doesn't matter, my daughter, now you're here. And you're part of this family again, Robert replied, tears glistening in his eyes. When Anna settled back into life with her newfound family, the atmosphere in the Miller household began to shift, her presence brought a renewed energy, filling the void that had lingered for so long, with Michael, her long-lost brother, she formed a special bond, becoming a loving and protective sister to him, but perhaps the most exciting moment came when Anna revealed that she was pregnant, you're going to be a grandfather, dad, she announced, her eyes shining with happiness, the news brought a renewed sense of hope and joy to the household, a symbol of the new beginning that Anna's return had ushered in, and when they eagerly awaited the arrival of the newest member of their family, the Millers knew that, together, they could overcome any challenge that life threw their way, and so, within the walls of the Miller home, laughter echoed and love flourished, Robert found solace in watching his grandchildren grow, their youthful energy a constant reminder of the resilience of family bonds. Though the memory of Sarah's loss always lingered, they had forged a path to happiness and love, proving that even in the aftermath of tragedy, light could illuminate the darkest of nights, their journey was a testament to the power of resilience and the enduring strength of familial ties, through the highs and lows, they remained steadfast in their love for one another, finding joy and unity in each other's presence, when their story unfolded, it became a beacon of hope for those who had, weathered their own storms, it served as a reminder that no matter how dark the night may seem, the dawn always brings with it new possibilities for happiness and renewal. If this story has touched your heart, I'm certain that the next video waiting for you will do the same. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you never miss out on our future heartwarming tales. Until next time, may your days be filled with love and light. The above is today's story. If you like it, please subscribe our channel and give it a thumbs up. See you next time.